So, what do you do when you build yourself, only to realise you built yourself with the wrong things? You rip it up and start again. That is the work of your teenage years. To build up and tear down, and build up again, over and over, endlessly, like speeded up film of cities during boom ties and wars. To be fearless and endless in your reinventations. To keep twisting on 19, going bust and dealing it again. And again. Invent, invent, invent. They do not tell you this when you're 14. Because the people who would tell you, your parents, are the very ones who built the thing you're so dissatisfied with. They made you how they want you. They made you how they need you. They built you of all the things they know and love, and so they can't see what you're not. All the gaps you feel leave you vulnerable. All the new possibilities only imagined by your generation and non-existent in theirs. They had done their best with the technology they had at hand at the time, but now it's up to you, small, brave future, to do your best with what you have. Don't limit a child to your own learning, for he was born in another time. And so you go out into your world and try and find the things that are useful to you. Your weapons, your tools, your charms. You find a record, or a poem, or a picture of a girl and you put it on the wall and go, her. I'll try and be her. I'll try and be her, but here. You observe the way others walk and talk, and you steal little bits of them. You collage yourself from whatever you can get your hands on. You're like the robot Johnny Five in Short Circuit crying, more input, more input for Johnny Five, as you rifle through your books and watch films and sit in front of the television, trying to guess which of these things are you are watching. Alexis Carrington Colby walking down the marble staircase. Anne of Green Gables holding her shoddy suitcase. Kathy wailing on the moors. Courtney Love wailing in her petticoat. Julie Burchill, gunning people down, Grace Jones singing Slave to the Rhythm. That you will need. When you get out of there, what will be useful? What will be eventually... you? And you will be quite on your own when you do all this. There is no academy where you can learn to be yourself. There's no line manager slowly urging you towards the correct answer. You are the midwife to yourself and will give birth to yourself over and over in dark rooms, alone. And some versions of you will end in dismay or failure. Many prototypes won't even get out the front door, as you suddenly realise that no, you can't style out an all-in-one gold bodysuit and a massive attitude problem in Wolverhampton. Others will achieve temporary success, hitting new land speed records and amazing all around, and then suddenly, unexpectedly exploding. But, one day, you'll find a version of you that will get you kissed, or befriended, or inspired, and you'll make your notes accordingly, staying up all night to hone in and improve upon this tiny scratch of melody that worked, until, slowly, slowly, you make a viable version of you, one you can hum every day. You'll find the tiny, right piece of grit you can purl around until nature kicks in and your shell will just quietly fill with magic, even while you're busy doing other things. While your nurture began, nature will take over and start completing until you stop having to think about who you're being entirely, as you're too busy doing now, and ten years will pass without you even noticing. And later, over a glass of wine, because you drink wine now, because you're grown, you'll marvel over what you did. Marvel that at the time you kept so many secrets. Tried to keep the secret of yourself. Tried to metamorph in the dark. The loud, drunken, fucking eyeliner smeared, laughing, cutting, panicking, unbearably present secret of yourself. When really, you were about as secret as the moon and as luminous under all those clothes.